What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Welcome to day 267 of the 365 day graphic novel review challenge. Today I want to talk to you about another volume of Hellboy. This is Hellboy volume 10, uh, The Crooked Man and Others. This is by Mike Mignola, uh, Duncan Figretto, uh, Richard Corbin, and uh, Jason Sean Alexander. I believe those are uh, all the uh, principal people who were involved with this book. And if you remember in my uh, video yesterday where I reviewed Hellboy volume 9, I said that it was part of a trilogy where Hellboy uh, takes up, uh, he starts leading a, a fairy army against another fairy army, and uh, I believe that is part of a three-part saga, but Volume 10 is not part of that saga. Uh, I was mistaken when I said that Volume 9 uh, was part of a trilogy with Volume 10, because this does not have anything to do with what happened in Volume 9. Uh, this is another one of those books uh, that has, uh, it's more of an anthology uh, story. It has a couple of uh, stories that aren't really connected with each other. The only uh, really connective tissue here is is Hellboy himself. And all of these stories are set before he leaves the Bureau. Uh, one of the stories, uh, I think uh, almost all of them are. There's one of them that's set uh, after he leaves the Bureau, but uh, one of them is set in the early 90s. One of them is set sometime after he leaves the Bureau. Uh, one of them is set uh, sometime in the 80s. Uh, one of the longer stories is set in the 1950s. And uh, I don't think there is a single bad story in this bunch. Uh, there's one that's drawn by Richard Corbin uh, that is set in Appalachian America, and I like that one quite a bit. Uh, I like it because, uh, for the most part, it doesn't make fun of Appalachian America. I live in the South, and a lot of times whenever you see people who are not from the South uh, portray uh, characters and uh, places and concepts from the South, they tend to uh, paint it in a uh, amusing light. They try and make fun of it, and uh, this story does not. Uh, I like that quite a bit. I like that, uh, I don't want to say that it respects the South, because a lot of this is stuff that doesn't exist. You've got uh, witches who are descended from survivors of the Roanoke colony, and you've got uh, a particular version of the devil here uh, with kind of a southern flavor to it. Uh, so I don't want to say that he respects the South, he uh, being uh, Mignola and also uh, his artistic collaborator Richard Corbin, uh, but they're not going out of their way to make fun of the South, and uh, I appreciated that. Uh, also, you've got a kind of short story here called uh, The Mole, uh, which Mike Mignola uh, plotted uh, after a doctor noticed a mole on his foot and said, you got to get that checked out. Uh, this is probably the second funniest uh, Hellboy story that I've read. It's not even funny uh, because it uh, explores Hellboy's uh, disdain for his uh, destiny uh, and how he really does not want to pursue uh, what everyone is telling him his destiny is, uh, but the way that it explores that I think is very humorous. Uh, I kind of like it, especially knowing that it came from uh, Mike Mignola being told that he had to get a mole looked at by his own doctor. Uh, so I like that one. Uh, the funniest story of Hellboy being the one where he eats pancakes. Uh, but uh, also we get a story here where uh, Abe Sapien and Hellboy are investigating uh, Blackbeard's skull uh, being reunited with his body. Uh, that's kind of an interesting story drawn by uh, Jason, Alex uh, Jason Sean Alexander, who was the artist on Dead Irons, which I uh, reviewed a week or two ago. Uh, I did not like his art in Dead Irons. I like it quite a bit more here, and I have a feeling it's because uh, these are characters who are very visually unique. Uh, Hellboy uh, is designed to look very different from uh, Abe Sapien, and they both look very different from a skeleton pirate that they are fighting, and I think that because of that, Jason Sean Alexander is able to take these very unique designs and uh, make the, his artwork work very well uh, in terms of those designs. Uh, with Dead Irons, uh, one of my complaints was that at times I had trouble telling some of the characters apart. You don't have that problem here. Uh, so I like his art here quite a bit more than I did in the story Dead Irons. Uh, also, uh, Duncan Figretto is here, and he's been uh, collaborating with Magnola for the last uh, few volumes uh, that I've, uh, not the 1953 and 1952 volumes, but the volumes of the main series. Uh, he's been collaborating for a while now on these, and uh, he's still uh, knocking it out of the park, uh, doing some really cool stuff here. Uh, so uh, I like all of these stories. Uh, I don't think there's any of them that are bad or even just uh, mediocre. I think they're all really good. Uh, I I was a little disappointed to see that this is not following up on any of the stuff from Volume 9, uh, but since all of this is really good, uh, I didn't mind. Uh, very quickly, I was able to just get right into this. I devoured this book pretty fast. Uh, I liked it. I am looking forward to reading Volume 11 and so far, uh, so forth, and uh, following up on the subplots that were uh, set up in Volume 9. Uh, but uh, this doesn't do that. Sorry, guys. Uh, electricity just went out for a second, I guess. Um, this does not do that, uh, but anyway, uh, I like this book quite a bit, and uh, I hope that you guys will check this out, and if you like this video, be sure to uh, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and uh, I will be back tomorrow with another Mike Mignola Hellboy-related book. In the meantime, uh, you guys have a great rest of the day. Catch you later.